having cover crops just because everyone else is thinking about having cover crops. So it's important to think about why you want to grow cover crops and what benefits you want from them. So um, dominantly cover crops are being thought of as a soil improving measure, but that can mean a number of things. It can mean improving soil structure, it could mean um, improving soil nutrient cycling and soil fertility, it might be a target to increase soil organic matter, it might actually be not a soil improving measure thing at all, it might be a weed control thing. And actually the crops you choose and the way you include them in the rotation would vary depending on the output that you want to get. So number one message is definitely think carefully about why you want cover crops and be clear in your own mind what you're doing it for. Hopefully by, by um, keeping a constant growing crop in the field so it won't leave any fields bare, one of it will continually feed the organic matter and the worms and everything that's there and then hopefully in return that will ease draining and reduce water logging in fields along with improved drainage and, uh, and then hopefully that will improve uh, the conditions going into the spring and for the next crop. If you are thinking about cover cropping think about how those cover crops fit well in amongst your cash crops. Think about how the crop you'll need to establish next will fit, whether the establishment strategy that you have in place is, is affected by the use of a cover crop. Equally, think about the entry point for the cover crop. Will you have enough time? Will you be able to establish them early enough? We're standing in Berwick, which is not a place where you can think about getting your winter wheat finished by the middle of August. It's certainly the beginning of September, which becomes really quite tight for fitting a cover crop in the rotation and might affect the one that you choose. So for example, in that situation, as we saw in the field earlier, the grass-based cereals and, and rye type cover crops establish much more quickly and deliver a much better cover than legumes. And so in this north of England situation, we might be focused on those crops, whereas further south, legumes and, and other crops might become more of an option. In terms of getting soil benefit from cover crops, it's about making sure that you use a site-adapted, site-specific crop and management strategy that fits with what you need. Adding organic matter, keeping something growing on the, the soil surface through the winter where you normally have um, bare soil is a really good thing for both soil health, for soil biology, for soil quality and to minimise runoff and soil erosion. But how you make that work most effectively will absolutely depend on your own system, your soil type, the nutrient balance and the cropping system into which you're incorporating it. The plan is to try and increase the organic matter level, the humus and everything that we've uh, learnt today from, from Liz Stockdale and, uh, and hopefully produce better, better crops, better travel more consistently in the fields. Timeliness will hopefully be improved as well and uh, generally ease workloads hopefully in the long term. They can be expensive to grow. Timeliness is key uh, where we are in the north, the, the window is tighter think that we need to focus on what we can grow well and and make sure that we do achieve something at the end of it. But I think it has shown that where we've got a, a growing root that we have got increased worm activity and better drainage and the fields travel better. So hopefully going into the spring we'll be able to get on fine and uh, and get a good crop established and then be on the right path to the next season and, and continue it on.